What's up, fam? It's Calla from Recalibrate, back with episode 11 of the Lighten Up podcast. On today's episode, we have my friend Sarah Waggle, who is a coach, an accessibility consultant, a an author. She has her own podcast, the Divinely You podcast, and just an all-around badass. She does so many things, like she'll just have to tell you all about it. <laughs> but I'm really excited for this conversation because in this episode, we talk about breaking up with your victimhood and how Sarah has a multitude of reasons that she could just feel so sorry for herself and not go after her dreams, but she has broken up with her victimhood and made the best out of every situation that's been thrown in her life. So this is a really inspiring conversation that I'm excited to share with you guys. We'll also be talking a little bit about um, how you can make sure your Instagram is accessible to people who are low vision or blind. So there's some good pointers in there. Um, one thing I want to say before we get into it is that I recorded this episode while I was dog sitting. What's up, Kristen? <laughs> so her dogs make a little bit of a cameo in this episode, and it was definitely a little bit distracting for us. So I hope that it's not too much too much of a distraction for you guys who are listening and that you can find it endearing instead. So if you're watching the video, you'll be able to see some of it, but otherwise you'll just hear it in the audio a little bit. Um, but I hope that you guys still get something out of this conversation. I really had a great time with Sarah. Fun story about Sarah is that we actually met through the Leo King because I've been following the Leo King for years and I shared an Instagram story and tagged him in it. And then she saw that story, saw that I also lived in Phoenix. So we met up at a park and really the rest is history. We've been friends ever since. So I'm really grateful for Sarah and all the ways that she's helped hold me accountable, the things that she's taught me and shown me and for her taking the time to sit down with me for this episode. So thank you, Sarah. Um, I'll put her Instagram and her information in the comments. So please be sure to go check her out. She's doing awesome work. Like I said, she has the podcast and just um, an, a, a Patreon and a lot of great information on her Instagram as well. So check that out. Before we get into it, I want to make one more disclaimer, just, you know, the typical disclaimer, the lawyer in me has to say it, um, that nothing on this podca podcast constitutes legal advice, medical advice, professional advice, counseling advice, or any sort of advice. This podcast is really just for entertainment and information purposes only. So make sure that if you're experiencing some sort of issue that you consult with the proper professionals for your dilemma. But first and foremost, make sure you're always consulting with your own intuition, your own guidance system, because truly at the end of the day, you are your own best guru, doctor, lawyer, teacher, consultant, all of the above. So that's how we step into our sovereignty. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for being here. I appreciate your support endlessly. And as I learn and grow through this process, I'm getting better all of the time. I hope that you agree. But either way, I just really appreciate you guys being here. So thank you for taking the time. I honor you. I love you. And let's grab a candle, some sage, palo santo, sweet grass, whatever you got laying around. And let's lighten up together. What's up, fam? It's Calla from Recalibrate here with my friend Sarah to lighten up together. So before we get into it, let's just take a moment to take three deep breaths together and really just center into this moment. So we'll breathe in through our nose together and let it out. Again, in through your nose and let it out. Last one, make it the deepest breath you've had all day. <sighs> As I light this candle, I just wanna call upon Sarah's highest self, my highest self, all of our ancestors and guides and angels and God, Jesus, whatever you wanna call it, just the highest of light beings to be with us here while we have this conversation to help us anchor more light into the world and move through some of the pain and learn from each other. And um, I just ask that you help us communicate clearly 
the truth of our hearts and that we may touch someone who's listening and inspire them to um, spread more light into this world. Aho, so it is. <laughs> and so it is. And so it is. What's up, Sarah? Hi, Calla. Ah, ah, this is finally so happening. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I would love if you could tell the people listening who you are and what you're all about. <laughs> I would love that. Thank you. Well, I'm Sarah Waggle. Um, I am a well-being leadership coach, meaning that I work with people who want to become leaders of their lives by taking care and making their well-being, their health and well-being their priority. So I focus a lot on personal authority by physical, mental, and spiritual um, health and well-being. Uh, I'm also a fitness and nutrition enthusiast. <laughs> um, I'm currently on day 54 of 75 hard on the day that we're recording this. So yeah. I follow a lot of rules every day for um, mental toughness. Um, I'm an author. I, I have a book in process and um, kind of got stuck on the, the, the new romantic story that <laughs> I thought was going to sound fake. So I like stopped writing it and I'm kind of having to like make it up. And anyway, mm. so, so I do write a lot. Uh, I also host my own podcast, the Divinely You podcast. You can check that out on all the major platforms. Um, and who else am I? Artist, crafter, uh, just a, a, a spiritualist. I'm totally into astrology and spirituality and, and follow a lot of that. So She's also a truth movement I person. I would definitely <laughs> say I am a truth movement person, yes. And the reason I wanted to have Sarah on this podcast <laughs> is because... Um, one thing that Sarah talks about that it really inspires me is the breaking up with your victimhood. And Sarah's story is really unique. And I know you've overcome a lot of adversity in your yeah. own life. So I'd be, I'd love if you could share a little bit about like your personal story. Sure. Let's just start <laughs> with the fact that I somehow landed in Arizona at some point in my 40s. <laughs> yeah. Welcome. Uh, <laughs> Arizona loves you. <laughs> yes, it does. Yes, it does. You know, and, and, and I'll go go way back, and when I was much younger, I, I experienced a lot of um, body aches and pains, a lot of depression. Um, I'll also say that I have a visual disability. I've been low vision my entire life, and so I have those kinds of things going on. And so when I was in my 20s, I remember people saying, like, you'd be best in Arizona, and I'm like, it's too fucking hot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why did they say that? Of because like, of the dry heat uh, and everyone thought that that would be just better mm. um for me to to just feel better with and so um but i was like no and i didn't really i didn't know anything about arizona and i just it was so far away from my family and so it's just not how i wanted it to go so i dove into this life of like working the job and living in chicago and and doing all the things and so by the time i hit my 30s i just crashed and burned mm. i felt like shit. i pretty much wanted to kill myself because i just the job was so toxic to my system mm -hmm. i was not able to physically take care of myself or mentally take care of myself <coughs> Um, there's, there's a, a dog. dog in the room. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know. He's right over there, not in the frame, but he's chilling with us. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, I got into my early 30s and I was just a mess and I just felt like shit about my life. And, and I remember saying, uh, you know, close to when I quit the job, if this is adult life, I don't want to live it because mm. I just thought it can't be this bad. Mm. And I really just always wanted my life to be better and to feel better. Um, and so I quit the job, but then I dove into this victimhood of I'm low vision. I can't work just any job, right? I can't go be a waitress or, right. a, you know, or anything like that. Um, so that was victimy, and then I was victim to me. me. <laughs> I mean, I call it my power victimhood for a reason. Like I was so victim about my life between low vision, money, can't drive, can't do this, can't do that. I mean, I had all of the, I had all of the everything as to why I can't do this life any better. I'm checking your hair on this microphone right there. Probably. There I we was go. Wondering that maybe I should tuck <laughs> it under my strap maybe that'll hold Let's it see. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah uh so yeah i mean i just kind of got to the point where i was victim to everything yeah and 
everything was an excuse. And so then I would just, depression kicks in and I just stayed in bed all the time mm. because I had depression and I couldn't, you know, my body hurt from the, the cold and the humidity and, and whatever else. And, you know, it didn't help that I was just mentally treating myself like shit. Um, yeah. And so it took me a really good chunk of my 30s to really heal a lot of my shit yeah a lot of my trauma a lot of my mental stuff and then um how did you like what did that look like a little bit of like because you know it's i I know it looks different for everyone but what sort of things did you do to try and break yourself out of that victimhood um a lot of it was therapy Mm -hmm. a lot of it was coaching um i got in in, you know about halfway through my 30s i got involved with ontological life coaching um which is how i get to be a coach now um ontological meaning coaching from being Mm. um and those coaches just were relentless from a space of love and from a space of healing and from a space of empowerment they they knew i i was a better person and i just couldn't my ego wouldn't you know mm-hmm. my brain kicked in i wouldn't allow me to see um just how brilliant of a person that i that i am right and so my coaches were just relentless like you are so much more powerful and i'm like no the fuck i'm not i can't even drive a fucking car right mm-hmm. like how powerful can you be you can't even get a job like you know i couldn't afford a better roof over my head yeah um couldn't afford the things i wanted to do and and at the time i had it in my head that i wanted to move to california i'd always wanted to live in the bay area and uh not now but then <laughs> <laughs> yeah um but uh so I turned 40 and I was in Chicago. We had this incredibly cold snap. It was like 50 below or something. And so everything froze. And no matter what I did, I couldn't get warm. And then days after it warmed up, I'm walking to the train. And I lived like two blocks away from the train. And it was the sidewalks were icy and all of the things. And I'm like, I really don't have to do this anymore. I am 40. Mm-hmm. I don't have to do this another winter. I don't have to try to walk on these icy sidewalks again. Fearful. I was always terrified I'd fall and nobody would find me and I'd freeze to the ice. (laughs) That was my biggest fear was that I would fall and I would freeze to the ice and nobody would find me. And um, so I I just kept telling them, I'm like, you don't have to do this anymore. You're 40. You can just pack up and go. Like nothing's tying you to Chicago. Yeah. And so I hired a coach and uh, who had gone from Indiana to California. And so you always want to hire a coach who's like a step ahead of you. Right. In which way you want to go in life. Right. And so, um, so I hired this coach um, who had done the same transition. And I, I wanted to... So here was my whole thing about California. I wanted to move to California because I had a job there or because my boyfriend or my husband and I were gonna drive across, cause I wanted to do a road trip. That's my, that's just my ultimate thing in life is I love traveling road trips because then you can like get out and see things and right. you know see the world and whatever. And that wasn't happening for me. I was still single um, and so victim to relationships. I mean, yeah. the victim story just goes so deep, right? You can be victim to everything. Right. Right. When you when you're when you're set on the fact that you're a victim to it, you're a victim to everything. Well, and then you draw. Yeah, you draw more reasons to be a victim to you. It's all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you x out every possible choice. You know, even if someone presents to you a choice, it's not a choice for you because you're a victim. Yeah. And so um, I was like, how am I going to do this? How am I going to travel across the country, move myself? Like, what am I going to do with my stuff? Well, I minimized, downsized all my stuff packed up a suitcase, a duffel bag, and a backpack, and I took a train, an Amtrak train, from Chicago to California. I had the time of, (laughs) I mean, it was so fascinating. Yeah. You got to, like, see the land and see the journey. I did. So I moved to California, and uh, I lived in the Bay Area, and um, I would say even then, my victim story kind of continued, but, I mean, I was proving myself that I could do these things little by little by taking this trip to California. Right. And, um, it was still just, it's just kind of like the lingering, you know, cause like you said, it goes so deep, like, mm-hmm. and not just in people, you know, it's in all of us. Like it we is. all have this, we all are victim to something. Right. Anytime you put yourself in a position, if you ever utter the words, 
I had no choice or I have no choice, mm -hmm. you're a victim. Mm -hmm. Bottom line. Yeah, because we always have a choice. Because you always have a choice. I don't give a shit what, it, what we're talking about. You always have a choice to stand up for what you believe. Right. And how you want your life to go. I'm even a victim to my life right now in Arizona, right? Living in my current situation and, you know. Yeah, there's a, I mean, there's always a, like, public transportation here fucking sucks. Like, you can't, there, the victim story. Can keep going. Can keep going. You could, it's just, you have to, like you said, you chose. <laughs> He's like, yeah, <laughs> see, I'm a victim. <laughs> He's validating my story. <laughs> he is. I don't even know if they can hear it. They might, may or may not be able to, but, um, like, you could easily just keep continuing to perpetuate yep. that. And it is really just like every day yep. and every time something happens, you have to choose to be a victor yep. again and again and again yep. and again. And it's always a choice now. It's always like, I mean, you know, like I said, uh, in the middle of 75 hard and there's been days during 75 hard where I've had to be like, get up, go do the thing you said you were going to do this thing, get up and go do it. And so I've had to, it's, it's all about self-talk and throughout mm -hmm. all of the last, like I'd say five years or so from starting my coaching program to relocating to California, coming back from California and landing in Arizona. Um, I would say I was listening to a lot of like powerful people, like powerful leadership people, mm -hmm. Um, like Jocko Willink, I listen to a lot of Joe Rogan, I listen to a lot of, um, I don't know, there's a whole variety of people you can look up, like Discipline Equals Freedom and things like that, to like find out who's talking about that kind of stuff, yeah. and really give a taste of this ex this ownership and responsibility, because ultimately we're all, we are responsible for how our lives go, Right. and so that's kind of i mean that's pretty much like how i landed here i mean there's obviously a lot of nuts and bolts in the middle but uh right. but that's kind of how i ended up in arizona and it's been like i've done more healing both physically and mentally since i've been here than i've probably ever done and it's because i wasn't constantly fighting the cloudy days or the mm. the hot and cold or the you know whatever because it's always pretty much warm here i mean yes we have some moments where it's not so right um i think it was like a week in july where i was just like okay it's got to get sunny sooner i'm just gonna lose my shit <laughs> <laughs> um but i i just i've I've, ex I've exceeded my own expectations living here so just what i'm able to do here physically and mentally and spiritually that i haven't been able to do living anywhere else and right now you probably couldn't pay me all the money in the world to go back to the pay area. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, we're not going to move to California. <laughs> oh, California's done, I think, for me. Yeah. One thing I want to touch on that I think is really powerful that you talked about that I work on too is, um, like, doing hard things. Like, you know, whether it be, like, maybe you could tell a little bit about what this 75 challenge is or whatever. And oh, like, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, so 75 hard, there's, um, rules that you follow every day. So, um, it's created by Andy Frazella. Um, so if you want to look him up, go for it. Um, he's a crazy mofo too. He's yeah. so fun. Um, but so 75 hard. So there's like five rules. Uh, you got to do two 45 minute workouts a day. One of them has to be outside. Oh, I live in Arizona and I did do this in July. Uh -huh. <laughs> I just want to point that out. Um, read 10 pages of a nonfiction book. So preferably like a self-help, something right. like that. Um, you have to take a progress photo, drink one gallon of water. Um, I thought it was interesting that I actually exceed a gallon of water, oh. but I live in the desert. So that yeah. kind of makes sense. Yeah. Um, and then you have to follow a diet of your own discretion or own choosing. No cheats, no alcohol. So I've been sober since oh. all this thing. What day are you on? I'm on 54. Good job. So you did all those things for 54 days. I've done all of those things for 54 Damn. days. That's, so, that's powerful. Um, do I plan on staying sober? No. <laughs> no. But I'll, I'll, what I'll do is, so this will be done the 1st of September. Um, and so then I'll drink some in September, but I will also then turn around and do sober October because that's fun. Oh, so, is that a thing? Yeah, it's a thing. Okay. Yeah, sober October. Sober October. 
Yeah, these, like, learning to do hard things, like, whether it be, I've done combo, which is really hard, mm -hmm. and I like to exercise, which is hard, and, you know, you're doing these challenges, Sober October, I've been sober for six, six months, like, all of these things, thanks, <laughs> all of these, well, I still smoke weed, but, like, <laughs> sober from alcohol, I should we say. All, we all gotta have a thing. We all have a thing. <laughs> um, but doing these hard things, like, really is like ties back to victimhood because it, it does yeah it does because so 75 hard it looks like a fitness or a nutrition challenge it's not it's a mental toughness challenge mm -hmm. um and by that i mean it's not meant to challenge you physically or or, or, or whatever yes it's going to do that yes you're going to get fit because you're working out two 45 minute work that's 90 minutes a day of exercise i know that's i'm like i don't do lot. that much. that's a lot that's a lot you're eating a diet and if you're following a, the right diet for what you want results wise or goal wise you're going to lose weight right you're consequently yeah. you're going to be fitter but that's not even the point the point right. is is that you discipline yourself enough to do these things like i mean at first when this first started it was june heading into july that's the hottest stretch of yeah. of, of summer here um i was getting up at 4 4 30 in the morning to get outside to get the the outdoor workout done oh man before it got hot yeah. I'm going to have to do that this next week, too, because uh. it's about to heat up again. But anyway, um, you're also disciplining yourself to stick to nutrition. Now, I chose a super simple nutrition plan where I've basically eaten the same meals every day. Oh. Um, I cut out sugar, no added sugar. Um, and so it, the mental toughness is like, my roommate doesn't do that. Yeah. My roommate still goes through fast food. My roommate still buys junk food. My roommate still does what she wants to do, mm -hmm. right? And I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. I'm not participating in that. Mm -hmm. And so these challenges, Sober October, it's meant to be a challenge, but it's meant to challenge your mental state. Mm -hmm. And when you discipline yourself to challenge your mental state, kind of sucks like i see all these singles things in arizona but they're all like anybody want to go grab drinks and i'm like y'all want to go grab drinks at nine o'clock at night on a weeknight i'm like going to bed because i gotta get up and go work out tomorrow morning where's that where's that single where's crowd? that scene yeah <laughs> where's that single crowd of people who are actually challenging themselves to improve their lives right that's the people i want to know <laughs> right well because when you challenge yourself and you do these hard things like then you see like well damn like yeah, if I was a victim, how could I do that? Yep. What? Hey. Shh. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. You're hey, fine. Hey, hey. Come here. You're fine. Come here. Come here. Yes, absolutely. When you challenge yourself, there's no victim. Yeah. You're less likely to have that victim space because you're like, I said I was going to do this thing. No excuses. And I did it. And I did it. And I'm telling you, I've said a few times, probably in the last six months, I've done the things I said I couldn't do. Right. I said I couldn't be a nomad because I didn't drive. Every nomad I've ever known drives. <laughs> I don't drive. I was a nomad. Yeah. I never actually had a home in California. I lived in an Airbnb. Then I worked and lived at a camp. And then I lived with a family. Wow. Um, I'm still technically a nomad because technically I don't have my own place even in Arizona. I live with my friend. So Nomad life. <laughs> so I did the nomad thing without driving. I've done 75 hard even with whatever's come up, right? I've had yeah. some pretty hard rejections lately that have really that would have really driven me to eat sugar or to drink alcohol and I'm just like, nope, I'm doing this thing. And yeah. and what happens when we do this kind of thing? We stop hiding from shit. Our shit comes up to be healed, mm. to be transformed. Mm. And that's when you stop being a victim. Yes, am I still a victim? Yes, I'm a victim to my current circumstances. But you got to keep transforming it and 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 i want to say alchemizing it yeah to be better yeah so you use it so how do you alchemize it or like how do you because when, when i have a better place to live i'll let you know <laughs> <laughs> it is one of those things like i it's also a balance right because you know i've tried to do certain challenges and things and then i fail mm -hmm. and that could easily also slip you back into victimhood where you're like i can't even fucking do a, a 
20 day thing like blah 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 so how do you hey bro what do you want <laughs> come here come here come here we got dogs we got in the his dogs house and he's a he's a victim right now he's, he's being a little bit of a victim <laughs> come here he's being a victim <laughs> um, <laughs> of not enough love at this Apparently, exact moment. We're not giving him enough attention right now. Come here. <laughs> um. So how? What? Like, how do you do that? Or what advice? Well, I guess what I was saying is, is like the balance of not letting yourself turn into a victim because, like, it's okay to not. Like, if you were to have failed at this whole thing, like you did it, and you're mm -hmm. gonna finish it. But if you mm -hmm. would have, like you would still be just as beautiful and loving and worthy. I think that's it is like we tend to, when we get rejected or we fail at something, we tend to, to directly correlate that to our self-worth. And I would do that a lot. Like guy wasn't interested in me. Oh, I must be a worthless piece of shit or I'm too fat or yeah. I'm too this or I'm too that, like fill in the blank, right? So. I think that's kind of where we all get stuck in a in a because you can be a victim and you can own it like you hear me talk about like i'm still a victim that's Bro. owner that's owning it all right i think we gotta pause this podcast and deal with this pup right probably now. <laughs> like a plan. we'll be right back all right the dog has been loved and cared for and taken <laughs> outside so thank you for your patience and for um bearing with us as we do this real life thing <laughs> this thing in real life <laughs> live <laughs> live and live, live. unedited so i think we were talking about um just like how if you fail it's not tied to your self-worth and maybe mm -hmm. like um yeah i don't know do um i think i was going to say like it's not tied to your self-worth it's just an opportunity to fall back and regroup Right, because yeah. we can't all fail at something. It's going to happen. Um, you know, I could have easily fallen off the rails of 75 hard at any time. There's definitely been opportunities, I promise you, mm -hmm. um, where I'm, you know, where I definitely know that I would have in a previous version of myself, I would have just been done. But that's just an opportunity for growth. It's just an opportunity. It's not, it doesn't reflect your self worth. You're still a magical human being. Yeah. Um, and you know it's just an opportunity to keep going so right and like we are worthy of love and happiness and joy and whatever all the good things simply because we exist like exactly. we don't have to do anything we don't have to drive to be worthy of <laughs> you know we don't have to have a job right. to be worthy of love like we are worthy simply because we exist in this exactly. realm and i think that that's like the most important thing to remember. I think that I will share what I shared right before we started recording, which was that I've had some really cold rejections lately, right? I was supposed to get an apartment in July and I got rejected. Um, I was supposed to have a podcast interview for another podcast and I got rejected really coldly actually. Um, and then I um, <laughs> and then I, I was applying for a job and I really got rejected before even getting in the door of, for the interview, I got rejected. And I can, I can tell you right now that there is a version of me who would have been like, I fucking suck. I'm a worthless piece of shit. Nobody even care. I can't even get a job. I can't get an apartment. I can't mm -hmm. get this podcast interview. Like what the fuck is wrong with me? I know there's that version of me somewhere, mm -hmm. but I, in the place I am now, I can tell you that I just see it as redirection. Like, mm. okay, spirit clearly, you know, and where we are energetically right now, I know spirit is guiding me. My higher self is guiding me to something greater right. on around the corner. Yeah. And so I'm not sure how you want to transition this into talking about other th the accessibility <laughs> stuff, but I'm going to let you as the host <laughs> figure that out. <laughs> I can do it if you want me um, to. Yeah, we could. Like, I think just before, I guess that's really the transition. But I'm just, it's just really inspiring for me because we all just go through so much shit. And to watch your brothers and sisters, like for me to watch you and like go through this and just handle it with such grace. And like, really, like you just laugh about it. And, you know, you 
like recognize that there is that version of you that wants to feel that way but instead you just like you I can just see the work that you've done to like mm. change your attitude that it is redirection and like really just alchemize like your pain and suffering into motivation for whatever it is that you're doing and so like yeah I did want to talk about accessibility <laughs> because that is one you know like you're like the fact that your low vision is just like such a small not even like part of you you know yeah. you're so much bigger and greater than that but like it is also something that makes you unique mm -hmm. you know and so yeah. you do bring a unique perspective and I've learned a lot from you about yeah. accessibility and like bringing that into my consciousness about how I can make sure what I'm doing online or wherever is yeah accessible so how can you or what do you have to say about that <laughs> i think what i will start by saying because i want to like kind of maybe smoothly transition from what we were talking about to what this is and because it is the same conversation right right breaking up with being a victim to being low vision i can't drive and all these things like those were you know it's like for a really and self-worth for a real long time i'm 42 now but for a good chunk of my life, it was why the fuck did God make me blind? Yeah. Why? Why did that have to be me? Why couldn't I have vision so I could drive, so I could road trip, so I could travel and do the things I want to do or have the job I needed to have or whatever it was, right? So I tied that to my self-worth for so damn long. Yeah. And victimized myself to it for a real long time and it's taken some work y'all <laughs> let me just talk about inner work okay i have worked with coaches for solidly for the last five years um i haven't worked with a therapist in a long time but i did probably at least five years ago i worked with a therapist so i i think there's room for both in the world i think mm -hmm. there's reasons why you should work with either a therapist or a coach at whatever time in your life depending on what you're going through um but it's taken a lot of work for me to be like, actually, that's my gift. Mm. My mm. gift is low vision mm. because my family lives in Southern Illinois, in the middle of nowhere in a small town that has like nothing really for me. Um, and I'm the one who left. Mm. I left, I went to college. I went to, lived in Chicago for 15 years. I lived in, I took I took a trip across the country. I lived in California for 10 months. Um, and then I, I moved myself to Arizona. And I've also done, because I've done all of that, I've done all of this healing work, mm -hmm. right? I've done all of this work around my self-worth and around who I am and around my family and healing my family. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, that would not have happened if I weren't, low vision. If I didn't have a disability, I would have never left right. the town where they live. I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell you the town. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I would never left the town where they live. They all still live there. Yeah. And yes, they see some things on the larger scale, but nothing to the degree that I do. Right. Um, and so as painful as it is for me, and I, I, a part of my healing work was writing fuck you letters. Yeah. One of my coaches was like, just write some fuck you letters. And I was like, what? He's like, tell God, fuck you for making you blind. And yeah. I did. I would, I would write letters to, to God and to blindness and to all of the things. And I would just say, fuck you. You suck. Thanks a lot for putting me in this place. Yeah. And now I can tell you that I can say that I, it's a gift. It's, it's made me now the woman that I am who can boldly say, hey, dude, you know what? Because of censorship, you have to post this picture of text because if you don't, they're gonna cut you off of in the internet. But unfortunately, you posting that picture of text means you're denying the blind audience from being able to know what's really going on in the world. So, well, first thing I just wanna say, like, holy shit, I got goosebumps when you were talking about um, the fuck you letters and stuff because that's a major <clears throat> part of healing <laughs> like we cannot just love and light our way no. to healing like no. you have to feel that like my friend calls it divine rage like it's like this divine anger that just like <laughs> flows through you and you're just like fuck you like yes and you have to feel that because if not like it's still there it's yeah. always you know and like the thing about healing is it's not like you're just like oh i deal i dealt with that i'm like, done it's I'm over done. i'm good <laughs> yeah like 
it's a process and it's, ah, a, it's a journey. Ah, that's funny. But like a major part of it is that. And then once you kind of get mm. through that, like major, you know, you held, you held onto it for so long and like, mm. you know, it was like this probably like tsunami or like multiple huge waves of anger and sadness and stuff. That was a lot. And then as you felt oh. it and processed it, it kind of like, now if it comes up, it's kind of just like maybe a little bit of a calmer I definitely Wave. still feel it, and I definitely give myself permission to be with every feeling. Right. I think that's a huge um, part of healing as well, is giving yourself permission to be with every feeling, yeah. whatever it is that comes up, even if you're, like, angry in the moment. Like, God damn it, I can't drive, and I need to run errands, and my roommate's busy tomorrow, and that fucking sucks. Yeah. Okay, then I still have to run errands. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, you still, have to, you still have to own it. You still have to, you know, but it's okay to experience. It's always okay to give yourself permission to experience emotions, whatever those are. And if somebody ever shows up to me with all sunshine and rainbows telling me they're a healer, I know they're bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> right? right? Like, you are not sunshine and rainbows if you're healing. No. It doesn't work that way. Well, no one's sunshine and rainbows 24-7. No. It's like, that's no. not... It don't work that way. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> we're, we came into this human reality where darkness and light exist, and they are both essential mm -hmm. in order for us to understand. For us to know light, we have to know darkness. Well, you know, it's funny because the full moon is this weekend. The second Aquarius full moon in Leo. So hello to a lot of like massive energy. But <laughs> what happens when there's a full moon? It illuminates. Mm -hmm. But when something's illuminated, it also creates a shadow. Yeah. Right. And so we have to be in the shadows. We have to be with that part of ourselves. There's just no, there's no avoiding it. And if you avoid it, that's just bypassing it and yeah. it'll never heal. Yeah. So take away, feel your feelings. Feel your all feelings. Of them. You're fine. Bro. We're just letting him feel his feelings. Hey, 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 hey. Oh my goodness. Come here. Are we gonna come have to pause here. again? Well, I mean we're almost come here. We're almost finished. We're almost finished. Let's see. Oh, here we oh, go. Maybe we got Aww. a puppy. We got a puppy. Hi, puppy. Your feelings are valid. You've been heard. You've been heard. See? So we just, uh, you know, well, I do want to talk about before we go about the accessibility yeah. and like how we can as, you know, if you're a content creator listening to this or even just a human being on the internet, <laughs> like how can we be mindful of um, the low vision or visually impaired. <laughs> you just burped. I think you burped. <laughs> I think, I mean, one of the biggest things is that if you are posting pictures of text, if you're posting a video that's all images and maybe it's subtitled or captioned or whatever, is to just really know that that's like denying me and a lot of other people who can't see those things that content um and so and it's unfortunate the way things are right now because we have to deal with censorship in a big way and i think what i will say is that if you are posting that kind of content i respect you and please be okay with somebody messaging you directly because i do that a lot because i know some things they just can't say if they do they're going to get kicked off the internet and i don't want to mess that Wait, up for people like so what are you saying about the text like so the text in He's your... He's trying to hump a pillow over here. It's really <laughs> aggressive. And then the other dog is like really not happy about it. It's like so much happening right now. Um, so where you're saying like if someone posts like a screenshot of text or like... Yeah. Because didn't you say that like you can't... It is easier if it's like bold text. Yeah. Oh, in the caption. Because you can have the captions read. Right. So oh. if you post a picture of text... So let's just say you do take a screenshot of an article... Right? Because that's what's happening a lot lately is people are screen capturing an article and then that's their Instagram poster. That's their Instagram story. Well, the problem is, is that sometimes they're readable and sometimes they're not. It kind of just depends on the text, I'll be yeah. honest. Um, <clears throat> but if you can put something in your caption, if it's a post, if you can put something in your caption that says article about blah, blah 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 or here's the headline you know so that at least there's some context right so you understand what the post is even about or like if they posted like you can find this 
like link to the article in my bio, in my bio or and then I can just go read the article and manipulate it however I need to because okay. here's the thing about accessibility is that you can take all the measures you want to and I can give you all of the things that I can give you but the next person that you encounter who's low vision or blind using accessible technology maybe has completely different skills than me right and maybe has completely different vision than me so they're going to see it differently right so for me to give you all of the here's the things that here's the five things to do right that's cute that's my five things to do right <laughs> right but that's not the next person's five things to do um and so but yes if you can when you do post pictures of text if you can just put it in your caption what the what the text is that's helpful um yeah if it's somebody's story honestly sometimes i pick and choose whether or not i actually care to read it or whatever sometimes i screenshot the story and read it later hey bro chill you can't eat the pillow oh my goodness Oh, this is fun. This is fun. <laughs> I didn't anticipate that they would be this wild during, during a recording. A recording. <laughs> like, it's been a lot. So thank you, everyone, for dealing with these puppies everything. and everything. Um, I'm going to pause this again. Okay. And then we're going to come back with a finishing memo and uh, some cards. But cool. I feel like we need to take a little break. <laughs> oh my god. We do or oh he my god. does. Or he does. <laughs> oh, I I'll get the cards going. going. So basically, in summary, <laughs> um, we can all be more mindful in our posts about like because you can have the captions read to you by your phone, right? Correct. So Correct. we can be mindful of like at least providing some context of what the post is about in our captions. And that's one thing that we could do to make our Instagrams more um, accessible. accessible. I would also say to like be open to a DM because I have DM'd people because like I said, I want to be respectful that I realize what's going on with censorship. So I want to be respectful. And if you don't want to actually write it because you're like afraid of getting caught, like I'm going to respect that. And I'm going to DM you and be like, Hey, what was that about? Is it something that I need to know? Yeah. So, yeah. um, there's that opportunity as well. Yeah. To just answer and be respectful. Yeah. In your DMs. Yeah. Yeah. And for some of the bigger folks, I've had their fans respond when I've commented and been like, what does this say? Because, you know, if it's somebody important, yeah. you really want to know. And I've had their fans respond and, and write out whatever the text was. So that's really cool. I'm always honored when their fans take the the minute to type it out and whatever. So that's that's really nice. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. So. Well, definitely check out Sarah. I've listened to your podcast. It's beautiful. Thank you. And I just appreciate your perspective so much. And, um, yeah, you can find you on Instagram at, uh, so my Instagram handle is Sarah, S A R A divinely you. Um, my podcast is the divinely you podcast. You can find that on all the major platforms. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, those are probably the two main places to find me right now. Yeah. But Sarah's a coach. You, she is, yeah. you can always work with Sarah for coaching. She's awesome. She definitely knows her shit. She's been doing her, the work. <laughs> And, um, yeah, your perspective is just, it's, I thought it's like divinely you and uniquely you. Yeah. And I'm really grateful. I've always like thought that like divinely you sort of incorporates like all aspects of you that make you divinely unique. Yeah. And so because I'm such a diverse person, you know, I do love coaching, but I also love fitness and working out and, and eating healthy and taking care of myself. I also love technology. I also love art and crochet and all. Yeah. So I just like, there's so many things about me that I felt like I needed something for my brand that brought all of that mm -hmm. together and brought all of that out of everyone that I work with. Yeah. And so that's kind yeah, of... Yeah, because we're not... Like, that's the whole thing, too, with Recalibrate, same, same. Like, everyone's like, you need a niche. I'm like, uh, my niche is me. Like, <laughs> I am the niche. So I'm just going to go ahead and be me. And if people like it, great. And if not, great, you right. know. But yeah. it's like you don't want to just be an accessibility coach. You don't right. want to be, you know, there's so much more to you. You don't want to be just a health and fitness coach. Correct. like Because really yeah. it's all 
related. Because, well, and the, the thing is, is like a health, health, wellness, and fitness sort of goes with the individual. But when it comes to accessibility and things like that, I'm going to go more with a company because they're going to come to me for their website or, you know, hey, is this, is this accessibility working or whatever. So there are different aspects to the different work that I do. So. Right. So if you also are building a website, Sarah does consulting in I terms do. of accessibility I do as accessibility well. consulting. <laughs> she does all the things. I do, except I will then refer you probably to the web designer who can actually help you fix the problems. But, yeah. <laughs> but you can anyway. tell people like if it's working or not. Yes. Yes, I can. So before so. we get out of here, I would love if Sarah, if you would pull a card for us and see what message comes through we're pulling from the whispers of love deck by angela hartfield so, so let's see at. what the deck has for the collective okay. on this day let's see we'll go from the bottom How about that okay Ooh, a thick card is it two is it two it's two is it oh okay well then mm. there was two honesty is essential mm -hmm. speak with love and truth and focus on love Look for the good in everyone. Yeah. That pretty much goes that, yeah. in line with everything we've said. Like, first, honest. You're honest about what you're going through. You're honest yep. about your feelings. You're honest about your experience. And you feel it. Yep. And then you focus on love. Love. <laughs> love. Which is the only truth. It I is. I have goosebumps. It is. Wow, no wonder you got two. Because these are, they're they a combined message. They are. Is there anything else that you want to say to the, the I don't, people? I don't, I don't think so. Yeah, I feel like we covered it all. Just know that, um, you know, we're all going through our own challenges. We are all, we all could be victims of so many things. We can. But we can always choose. We always have a choice. And um, we hope that you choose love. Oh, yeah. I was just going to say that, too. <laughs> choose love. <laughs> but yeah. seriously, well, you know... I, there is like the whole like facing your darkness but at the end of the day like come from love be from a space of love and because that's that's the way out through all of what we're all going through and experiencing right now is loving each other however we show up for each other yeah so. i love that it's beautiful thank you yeah. sarah thank Thanks, you so sarah. much we did it, we did it. Yay. oh i love you <laughs> i love you <laughs> thanks fam <laughs>